Hey, up, it's Steve from the old Yorkshire Geek. Uh, some Indiana Jones news ish that I'm going to look at. As y'all may already know, uh, Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny um, debuted or premiered, whatever you want to call it, at the Cannes Film Festival in France uh, this week to a mi- some might say a mixed reaction <laughs> to the, the pundits present. Um, it's not got amazing reviews. Um, we're just going to look at an article about that and look at a couple of the reviews as well. Uh, with some highlighted text that I've uh, noticed, so let's uh, let's get into that. Yeah. And there's Indy. Uh, this is from uh, NME. Uh, as usual, uh, all the links uh, what you're going to see are in the description down below. And don't forget, like and subscribe. Uh, you know, please, please subscribe. Share the videos. I'm not begging, but I am. Uh, share the videos. Drop a comment. Hit the notification bell if you subscribed already. Um, I'm also on Rumble and uh, Spotify and Amazon Music Podcasts and Google Podcasts, uh, as you see from the little icon over there. Uh, I'm also my live streams are also on Twitch uh, for the moment while I'm using Streamyards, but we'll see how we go. Uh, I'm also on Facebook, 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 Instagram, and Twitter. Links are in the description. As I have links to my two books. Sorry, ghosts moving about in the house. Uh, as I have links to my two books, Mercury Rapids, there it is, uh, Lionhearted Sci-Fi Action Adventure, and Silent Predator, a short horror novella. They're on Amazon, Kindle and paperbacks, just a bit of fun. Don't expect, you know, anything of literary value, it's just, as I said, it's just a bit of fun. Right, enemy. Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny has left film critics divided, Indy deserved better. Some reviews, however, praise the final instalment as offering exactly what you expect from an Indiana Jones adventure. And there he is, in a still from the film. Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny has received mixed reviews from critics, with some hailing it as delivering a sweet blast of pure nostalgia, while others have declared it to be a complete waste of time. (laughs) Uh, The latest offering marks the fifth and final instalment of the Indiana Jones franchise, and sees acting legend Harrison Ford return to the role of the daring adventurer at the age of 80. With the first part of the movie being set in 1944, Dial of Destiny kicks off with the whip-cracking archaeologist looking to retrieve one half of the Antikythera, an ancient dial built by Archimedes from a Nazi scientist played by Mads Mikkelsen. I don't understand why they're using this Antikythera mechanism thing, because they found the Antikythera mechanism were found in, what, 1900, something like that, and it's just a, a rusty, encrusted lump of bronze or brass, or whatever, uh, that they haven't been able to, you know, make into a you know, uh, repair. You know, it's just a, they've, they've taken X-rays and stuff, so they know what it's like, and they think it were a uh, like a, a planetarium sort of thing. A, 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 you know, a little computer that could predict the movements of the the uh, um, um, bodies in the sky, um, obviously with, from an Earth-centric uh, viewpoint. Uh, but anyway. Uh, but it's, I don't know why they've decided to use it as this time travelling device. They could have thought of something else. Uh, like the Nazi bell, you know, the Glock. But uh, anyway. Uh, an ancient dial built by Archimedes, which I don't think the Antikythera mechanism was built by Archimedes, but anyway. For, from a Nazi scientist played by, I just said that. The remainder of the film ventures took forward to 1969, where Jones partners up with his goddaughter Helena, Phoebe Waller Bridge locate and retrieve the other half and potentially alter the course of history. Over four decades since the original Raiders of the Lost Ark film hit the silver screen, the latest instalment is the first of the sequels not to be directed by Steven Spielberg, with James Mangold now taking the reins. It also marks the first new film to be added to the franchise since 2008's poorly performing Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. I thought it did quite well. Kingdom of the Crystal School. Uh, I don't think it performed poorly. It was reviewed poorly. A lot of people didn't like it, but I thought it did okay. You know, monetarily. But I could be wrong. Probably am. Um, anyway, which featured performances from Kate Blanchett. Have I spelled that right? Is that how you spell it? Anyway, maybe. And Shia LaBeouf. Whatever happened to him? <laughs> The reviews for Dial of Destiny, set for general release on June 30th, have already come flooding through, and while most agree that the film is an improvement on its predecessors, generally the latest effort has left critics div- divided. An improvement on its predecessors? 
I don't think so. Maybe on Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, but not about the others. Taking a harsh approach to the new Harrison Ford-led film, IndieWire's David Ehrlich wrote, Not only is Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny an almost complete waste of time, it's also a belaboured reminder that some relics are better left where and when they belong. He also criticised the script as playing it safe and suggested that the franchise should have come to a close much before 2023. Well, it did come to a close in 1989 when they rode off into the sunset. The end. I think David Ehrlich got out of bed the wrong side, by the way, didn't he, when he wrote that. <laughs> but he's not wrong, probably. I've not seen it, obviously. Sharing his negative outlook on the film was Robbie Collin of the Daily Telegraph, who described it as feeling like a counterfeit of priceless treasure. The, the shape and the gleam of it might be superficially convincing for a bit, but the shabbier craftsmanship gets all the more glaring the longer you look, he said. The film is loaded with mayhem, but painfully short on spark and bravado. There's no shot here, nor twist of choreography that makes you marvel at the filmmaking mind that conceived it. So that's one thing that um, the original trilogy had. It, it had soul, and I get the feeling from the rev these reviews that um, this film seems a bit soulless, um, if that's possible. Um, and that's probably why Harrison Ford is quite sad at the moment, because he realises he's been involved in making a stinker. Anyway, the Times' Kevin Maher agreed. The good news is that it's not as poor as Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. The bad news is that it's not much better. He wrote, Ford remains on charisma overload. Charisma, whatever. Even when the machine around him is an autopilot, he brings his weathered gravitas to perhaps his most significant character. Inevitably, he and Indy deserved better. Uh, so there you go. So it's, it's, it's basically running on Harrison Ford's charisma and nothing else. Empire Magazine, on the other hand, celebrated the Mango-directed effort and awarded it a four-star rating in its review. For this first Spielberg-less outing, all the hallmarks of the series are there, as you'd hope them to be. Lovingly preserved like archaeological treasures, there is an ingenious and elaborate booby trap cave system. There is a throwback map sequence. There are plenty of Nazis ready for the punching. There is also some sadness and regret. A man out of time, finally running out of time, and surveying the ruins of his life, a tone that sometimes feels unusually sombre for this kind of blockbuster. Can we have some money, Disney? Thank you. That's, what, that's how that should have ended. Uh, the Independent shared this view, explaining that while the film itself is sprawling, very uneven, it succeeds in offering viewers exactly what you expect from an Indiana Jones adventure, chases, explosions and an epic fight sequence on top of a runaway train. Seen it all before. We're going to see it again, aren't we, in uh, Mission Impossible? That's probably going to be more exciting, but anyway. And look more realistic, because it's Tom Cruise. Uh, instead of just, you know, in front of the volume... Uh, with, you know, Ritter fans blowing. Uh, Indiana Jones The Dial of Destiny made its premiere at this year's edition of the prestigious Cannes Film Festival earlier this week. It will be available in theatres on June the 30th. So there we go. So just let me uh, get rid of that a moment. And we'll look at some of the other, a uh, couple of the other reviews uh, that have uh, that have dug out and just highlighted some uh, some sentences <laughs> and passages that uh, I noticed, but uh, we'll have a look anyway, just uh, just for the, for the laugh. So here we go, this is from um, the BBC, I do believe, uh, I think it's the BBC. Uh, Harrison Ford and Phoebe Waller-Bridge can't lift a film that is a depressing reminder of how much livelier his past adventures were. And, uh, we'll just go through the highlights. Good news is that it isn't a disaster. Uh, but it has uh, with little of Spielberg's sparkle. Speaking of fishes in time, Ford has been digitally de-aged to have the smoother face and thick brown hair he had in Raiders of the Last Ark. But he gives off the uncanny valley vibe of someone who isn't quite real. And what's worse is that when the film jumps forward to 1969, the CGI heavy unreality persists. And there we go. And John Rhys Davis as Salah has a pointless cameo. 
Mangold and his team dutifully crank out the action sequences, but it's often hard to tell what's happening or why. There's a shortage of surprising, rip-roaring moments to make you stand up and cheer, despite the best efforts of John Williams's rousing classic theme. The jokes and the zest and the exuberance just aren't there. Couldn't they at least have thought of something cool for Indy to do with his whip? Two stars, the BBC gave it. So that's that one. Uh, and we'll look at the other one. We'll look at the other one. We'll press me buttons. <laughs> no, it's not that one. It's that one. Right. Uh, this one's from Polygon. Uh, Indiana Jones, Dial of Destiny, traps Harrison Ford in the past. Right, so here we go. Uh, like Luke Skywalker or Citizen Kane's Charles Foster Kane, Indiana Jones is one of those characters who almost feels, feels synonymous with film itself. Yeah, it's one of the most famous characters in movie history. So let's have a look, see what we've got. Here we go. A tuk-tuk chase through Tangier's meandering alleys is equally enthralling. Uh, I, I, I meant to highlight that a bit. Uh, New York subway tunnels, a race through New York subway tunnels on horseback. It sounds interesting. Uh, especially as Helena and Indiana jump and tussle from vehicle to vehicle, but as the sequences become more explosive and the scale amps up, unreal visual effects take over. The climactic dogfight is digital sludge, and it offers nothing that's visually enticing. But Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny looks anonymous. There we go. And another little passage here. And just when it looks like Mangold might commit to a bold move at the end of the story, the film pivots away for a saccharine farewell that once again aims at fan service and recognition, taking all of Indiana Jones's agency away for the sake of one last cameo. I wonder who that is. Uh, Marion, maybe? I don't know. That decision reflects what legacy sequels largely represent. It concludes a story not in a way that gives its characters justice, but in a way that appeases the broadest audience looking to reminisce about something they loved in the past. Dial of Destiny is surprisingly bland. It's a disappointing facsimile of the much better Indiana Jones films that preceded it. That was from Polygon. There we go. So it hasn't uh, had the, a sparkling... Uh, debut was it <laughs> to be completely bulls pizzled frank that's my phrase for today <laughs> from not the nine o'clock news um but i still look forward to seeing it because i like indiana jones i didn't really mind King kingdom of the crystal skull it wasn't terrible uh but it was horrible in places <laughs> monkey swinging etc you know unbelievable um chases and you know too much cg and uh, that, that, i think that could be the problem here uh it's probably another example of disney overdoing uh the volume because i bet the i bet the bit on the uh the train the chase on the train and the subway tunnel and all that i bet all that's done on the volume the re over relying on it i could be wrong but i bet it is uh, whereas, you know, you've got film, films that uh, are using real locations and real stunts um, are, are, doing, are doing well, you know, Top Gun, this Mission Impossible film that's coming out. I think it's going to do amazing. But there we go. So, a uh, bit of a disaster. Uh, obviously, not everybody is saying it's, it's rubbish. <laughs> I don't think anybody, anybody no, nobody's saying it's rubbish so far, anyway. They're saying it's disappointing more than anything. Uh, so could that be worse? Could that be worse than just that hate-filled diatribe saying this is the worst film ever made? They're just saying it could it could have been better. <laughs> it could have been better. But anyway, right, we'll leave it there. So thanks for watching. Wherever you are, look after each other. And until next time, I'll see you there.